Hey everyone, welcome to this week's Azure update. It's the 21st of February. Not many updates this week, but you can jump to any particular update you care about the most. New videos this week. So we explored high performance computing, what it is, and then what are the capabilities in Azure to help you achieve high performance computing in the cloud. And also there have been some performance updates for the SQL hyperscale tier. So I quickly went over those. There's also a LinkedIn article version of each of these. I'm going to try and do that for every video I create and a sub 90 second YouTube short version as well, uh, if that helps. I'm also doing a LinkedIn weekly newsletter now based on the content of this Azure update, just so you can leverage that as well. Maybe you want to send it to your customers, whatever you want to do with that. On to what's new. So on the compute side, and I'm sure we talked about these before, but it's been kind of GA'd again. So the DV6 and the EV6. So this is based on the fifth gen Intel Xeon uh, Platinum 8537C, the Emerald Rapids processors. Remember the D is the more general purpose virtual CPU to memory ratio. And there's a few different combinations of those. The E is the memory optimized, which means you get more memory per virtual CPU. There are versions with or without the local temporary storage. You see the ones with the little D variant means it has the local temporary storage. And this is, I think it's a 27% higher virtual CPU performance. It's a 3X times L3 cache. They come in a lot of different sizes, but up to 192 virtual CPUs and 18 gigabytes of memory. They are using the Azure Boost. So the Azure Boost means I can get over 400,000 IOPS and 12 gigabytes per second of remote storage throughput, 200 gigabits per second VM network bandwidth. So obviously very high performance virtual machines. On the storage side, so Azure Migrate now has premium SSD v2 support. Remember premium SSD v2, yes, it has sub millisecond latency, but it lets you separately specify the capacity, the IOPS and the throughput. And the IOPS and the throughput, I can actually change dynamically through the, the disk's lifetime. So it's a really great cost-effective option because I can only pay for the specific elements, be it capacity, IOPS, throughput, I actually want. So Azure Migrate is now aware of the premium SSD v2 and its specific qualities and use cases. So it will now recommend its use where it is the optimal storage solution based on the evaluation of that source workload. Um, Azure Container Storage metrics are now automatically sent to the Azure Managed Prometheus um, in preview. So if I'm using um, the built for AKS storage, AKA ACS solution, the pool and the disk metrics can now be viewed in the Azure Managed Grafana through that integration with the Azure Managed Prometheus, which is basically scraping all of those different logs. And again, it's automatic. If you have the Azure Container Storage enabled for a cluster, and it's also enabled for the Azure Managed Prometheus, those metrics are just going to show up. On the miscellaneous, so Windows Server Management by Azure Arc has gone GA. So I did a whole separate video on this. But basically, if I have Windows Server instances, wherever they may be, but I'm managing them by Azure Arc, i.e. it's that um, server operating system that Azure Arc is now aware of, details about that OS, part of the Azure control plane, so I can see it in the portal. I can query it through Azure Resource Graph but it also lets me take certain Azure services and use them on those Windows Server instances. And now what's happening is for those Windows Server instances that are covered by software assurance, you get a number of those Azure services for free. For example, Azure Update Manager, Azure Change Tracking and Inventory, uh, Azure Machine Configuration, Windows Admin Center, Remote Support, there's the ASR Initial Configuration. There's a number of these things, but now it's GA. So I get those capabilities and I can leverage that. And then this is a, a big one. So Majorana 1 has been introduced. Now, this isn't really a service you're going to use today, but it's an interesting advancement in quantum computing. Now, it's named after the Majorana particle that previously only been theorized, but Microsoft have now observed and controlled this particle. 
And the big deal about this, this particle is that it's very resistant to decoherence, i.e. the particle loses its ability to have its superposition state and where it would transition to a regular classic particle. And so what this new chip has today is eight of these topological bits, um, these qubits, a quantum bit on a chip. But the point is this design should be able to scale to one million of these topological qubits on the same very small factor. And if you think about a qubit, it's the basic compute unit of quantum computing, like a bit, that zero or one is for traditional computing. But the whole point of quantum computing in these states is instead of it being zero or one, it can represent any number of states simultaneously, which kind of seems weird in your brain. But what that means is it can process information much faster than traditional computing. So when you think about huge modeling of weather or certain types of materials, it's very good for this. And what this chip represents is a step and a key milestone towards quantum computing. So they developed this new type of material, this topo conductor, that enables this chip to have stable and fast qubit interaction. There was always challenges in the past with well, either you can make it stable, but it's very slow, or it, it's unstable. And what they've actually done through this is a new state of matter, the topological state. Um, there's a really good Microsoft video on YouTube about this. I recommend watching it. It's like 12 minutes long, but it's, it's really fascinating. Again, this is, I think, a step towards that quantum computing journey, but it, it's a very uh, interesting development. And then the February cost management updates are up. If we go and look at those, it's really based around, hey, for enterprise agreements, I can now do different cost allocation based on departments and accounts. When I'm using cost management, the co-pilot, i.e. the AI assistant, when I'm looking at my cost data, will give, now give you nudges. So a nudge is, hey, let's have a look over here. It gives you some ideas of where you could use Copilot to help understand your billing. They're also focusing on focus, the FinOps open cost and usage specification. So just think of this as a common format. So the goal here is for your billing data in the cloud, it's a common format. So whatever tools you wanna leverage, whatever insight you're using, it should be standard now across whatever services you may need. So that, that's uh, a nice enhancement on the billing. There's a few other things uh, in that article. Take a look. But that was it. Told you it was a quick update. I hope that was useful. Until next video, uh, don't panic and take care.